how did I come to um, make work that looks like maps? I never really pursued an art career, even though I wanted to, but I just couldn't give myself permission to do that. When I got into college, I discovered geography which was cool for a lot of reasons, and one was that you studied lots of things. You studied politics, physical geography, weather, the movement of people, sociology. It also included cartography, and I finally discovered here was an art medium that I could do with rules and restrictions, and I felt like I could give myself permission to be creative within this very restricted world of map making. And I really loved maps. I thought they were beautiful, organic shapes. There's maps that describe mountains or rivers, natural things, and there's maps that describe roads. Uh, and then you could pick something out, like I'm going to map where everyone in the neighborhood has a jack-o'-lantern on their porch. Anytime you map these random things, you're creating um, the basis of chaos theory, which is about randomness and patterns. You could pick and choose what you were going to map, and you ended up with this incredible patterning on this surface that described something real. I did work for the Forest Service for a while, and then I decided I was going to launch a career as a person who drew maps. They had an old-fashioned look, but they weren't maps that were functional in any way. This was what my idea of a map was, and it was describing coastlines, which chaos theory talks a lot about coastlines and how they're fractals and random patterns which, create, which repeat themselves. I was continually taking classes. I took a lot of classes at the Oregon, then called the Oregon School of Arts and Crafts. I took drawing classes. Oh, I took one of the evening printmaking classes at the Oregon College of Arts and Crafts, and then I became a printmaker. That was sort of it. I fell in love with the medium and have been making prints ever since, although I do other things as well, but that is how I started as an artist. So last fall, I decided my brain was getting flabby and needed a little exercise, and I needed to challenge myself to learn something that seemed impossible to understand. So I decided physics was what I was going <laughs> to learn. Chaos theory, about the patterns that exist in nature and about randomness, uh, complex systems of weather, migratory patterns of birds, coastline, and how coastlines are created, Th things in nature that I could understand. And then I began to understand that Part of my interest in cartography and part of my interest in nature was these complex patterns that seem random, and yet when you look at apparent chaos, it has an order to it, and I was able to sort of wrap my mind around that idea. So a lot of the titles for the work in this show uh, and a lot of the work itself goes kind of back and forth between mapping and chaos theory. This piece, which is called Point of Certainty, is the kind of the combination of both chaos and um, mapping to me. Now in mapping, when you have just two lines crossing, there's one point, and it is the point of certainty. But it also relates to chaos theory to me, because in a way this is a tongue-in-cheek um, commentary on how in um, chaos theory there is no point of certainty. There is, everything is in flux. It's always moving, it's always changing. What is an encaustic monoprint? I have, this is a piece of plexiglass and I have put on it encaustic medium. It's green just because I use whatever leftover um, blobs of wax I have and whatever color they happen to be is what it ends up being. So and then I use all kinds of tools that I can scratch and scribe and into the wax with. And I also can dribble wax on top of it and so on. And then that is my printing matrix. These are multiple runs through the press and some of them are many runs through the press. Before I, I start the process, before I print, before I do anything, I take blank pieces of paper and I have a whole bunch of uh, washers, metal uh, iron washers, and I um, squirt on them a combination of 50-50 white vinegar and water. And then I lay the paper down on those, just the blank white paper, put weight on top of it, and let it sit for about a day. And that's the rust transfers onto the paper and creates those rusty marks. And then I print on top, and again, I don't think about what I'm printing on top, but I get to pick out the ones that just magically resonate and, and happen, and that's what you're, for me, that's what these pieces are.